My guest today is DJ Sabu, radio personality, TV personality, musician, and entrepreneur of a health drink. So what we're going to do this, uh, this segment is we're going to play like Donald Trump. You're going to have to convince me to invest in your energy drink. Forget about your music career, forget about your acting career, anything. Why should I invest in your energy drink? And what's so special about it that it's caused so much uh, controversy and discussion? Um, mm -hmm. I think first of all, I'd like to appreciate the opportunity to, to come and speak to you. I'm really honored. Uh, I'm a big fan of your work and I'm inspired by you. Um, You're gonna have to sing just now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm sitting here as a social entrepreneur. The reason why I say social entrepreneur is because uh, I run this Busi Soliope Education Foundation, which does a lot of work in disadvantaged communities mm -hmm. as far as um, helping kids with schools is concerned. We've been running that for the past 10 years now, and uh, that's a non-profit organization. Um, the energy drink brand, how it links to the foundation is every unit of the energy drink that we sell, certain proceeds go into the foundation to help the kids. Now, I believe um, it's a 4.7 billion rand um, industry. There's 33 players in the country. South Africa? Yes, sir. 4.7 billion rand? Industry. That's the energy drinks market. Um, none of them are black owned. None of them are South African. A few that are South African are not black owned. And um, we've seen a lot of people go overseas to try and license energy drink brands into this country. But we haven't had um, a group of young entrepreneurs coming together to, to create their own product, and which is what we have done. I think we believe uh, we've got the nicest tasting energy drink in the country, as a matter of fact, in the continent. Who, who are you competing against? When, sorry to interrupt you, yes, but I'm yes, saying, I, I, I don't know the energy drink uh, that well. Um, who do you compete against? What, got, what's the big competition and where they come in? I know, you know, Monster's a South African, you know, Monster in California. One of the owners is South African. South, yes. South African, he was a lawyer here. Yeah. In fact, I think he operated around the area in which we are. He's moment. extremely inspiring. Mm. I've read his story of how mm. he left South Africa back in the 60s, 50s mm. or 60s, mm. and how he started Monster in America with his other partner and they bought into another mm. company and they've grown. Monster is one of them. Red okay. Bull is a leading player, of course. You've got um, other brands from California, a, a, a brand called Dragon that's disrupting the market. It's, it's in, in four more markets in the country. It's growing in leaps and bounds. It's an amazing, um, it's an amazing distribution channel that they're using, and they're doing very well in the market. And then you've got other smaller players. You've got your Score. You've got your um, Play, which belongs to Coca-Cola. You've got. Um, uh, your refresh. You've got so you've got different brands, but uh, the leading the leading player would be would be Red Bull. They, 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 of course, they created the the the, the 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 category, the energy drink category globally, and they've done extremely well. And I think how their model is owning their own brand and creating it, and then licensing it to all over the world and focusing on marketing. I think it's brilliant, and that's exactly what we want to do. How do you do, do that? That's how exactly. do you get a startup brand to take on Red Bull? I, I really wanted to talk about your other part of the career. We'll come to that later. Yes, sir. But I find this fascinating. How do you have the, you know, uh, what's the word, the guts to actually go out and say, listen, I'm going to take on Red Bull. You've got to have a lot of courage or conviction in yourself. I think every entrepreneur, when you start a business, mm. you know, you're starting it with, a, with, a, with the end goal in mind. And the, own, the end goal and the vision is to dominate the market. You want to become number one. I believe we can become number one. I believe there's predominantly black people um, mm. on this African continent. And I don't think there's anybody that can communicate with black people better than I can or mm. better than we can. I come mm. from the music industry. I understand the dynamics of this country, people's behavioral patterns from LSM, uh, different LSM brackets. Mm -hmm. I've been a young man who's been involved with a youth radio station before. I've marketed music. I've created mu successful musicians as brands themselves. I've been in every corner of this country, rural communities, townships. Uh, I've done television. I've done radio. Mm -hmm. I've got an extensive experience when it comes to media marketing, PR, and communications. And that's exactly, you know, one of the some of the skills that you know we believe we mm -hmm. can conquer the market. But if we can find a partner like your super groups, mm -hmm. uh, a super group is a logistical company yeah. but they've got accounts all over the country they're in the four courts and you know they've worked with Red Bull before they've worked with Monster before I know they're about are they to lose partners Monster. of yours we'd love to get that partner you can talk to the camera and um, just ask them to be uh, you know they're a great group they had wonderful results they were super group <laughs> if you would partner <laughs> with more fire you will not regret mm -hmm. it because in a matter of a few years we're going mm -hmm. to outdo
do all the numbers you've ever done with Red Bull, including combining Monster as well. Because we're a new kid on the block, we're fresh, we're vibrant, we're fearless, we're hungry. And you know, we want to make a point out there. We're not in it just to make ourselves rich and succeed, but we're in it to prove a point, make a difference. We're calling our project the pot a protest project. We want to show young people that it can be done. Nobody's funding us at the moment. Everything comes from our pocket and we, we believe. As an entrepreneur, you, you basically just are living on faith. You believe. Is this occupying all of your time at the moment? Yes, sir, it is. Um, so you've given up everything else. What about music? I've given up everything else. Um, for now, I'm focusing on it entirely, fully, 100%. I've lost a lot of income. I'm out of the radio. Mm -hmm. Being out of the radio means you can't get bookings to go and entertain or do appearances mm -hmm. as often as you used to. Because when you're on the radio, you're top of mind, you get a lot of bookings and gigs. Now, which means that income now is compromised. Um, I'm out of um, the SABC One um, channel, which is the biggest channel in the country. Mm -hmm. I'm on CNBC Africa. I'm building myself as an entrepreneur. I love business. I want to grow in it. I'm learning from people like yourself, mm -hmm. people like Bruce Whitfield. I'm learning from the, all the other presenters and the guests that come into, into our channel, which is a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a journey that I'm embarking on. Is this but, your own show on CNBC? Yes, sir. It's called hey. Kicking Doors, yes. Kicking doors is, is, is humbling. Which is what you've got to do. That's exactly <laughs> what you've got to do. And I think um, we haven't had or we haven't seen a young black entrepreneur in this country mm. or on the African continent that has gone out to believe in their product so much and be disruptive in the marketplace mm. without even a single cent in marketing mm. budget, but creating mm. such hype and such interest in their product. You know, they say advertising is a world of mm. attention. Whoever gets the most attention wins the war. Mm. And I think over the past couple of months, we've done very well as Mofi Energy. But Shabu, if you, there's a good chance of this. I, I think you're on the right track. If you look at Monster, if you look at Corona, Corona the beer, you know, with, yes, with yeah. the Lemon did exactly the same thing. They never advertised it, it was word of mouth that actually created their success. And I mean, today, these are major, mega brands of that. So I think you've got the energy, you know, you've certainly, but to have given up everything because I you believe. feel it's worth it. You feel it's worth it. I believe it's worth it. I can feel it in my blood. I believe. I believe more than anybody else believes. For people to believe in my product, I gotta believe in it um, first. But for me to even believe in my ideas and my mm. product, and you know, bringing them to fruition, I gotta believe in myself, which I do. Where get. do you make it? Where is it manufactured? So the cans are done in Bevcan, Nampak, and Brett's, okay. where everybody makes their cans, mm. and then we ship our, our cans to Heidelberg. Uh, our, our, our contract manufacturer is in Heidelberg. Um, Intler Beverages, they're responsible for brands like your Red Square, your Seven Star Energy Drink, your Switch Energy Drink, and they do other products as well as water. And that's basically our contract manufacturer. And who invented this drink? You know? it's, uh, it's myself and my business partner, CP Wilukule Nishongwe, yes. He's, um, he's a mining development expert, but he's a, a chemical engineer by profession. And we went with the name Morphire because, you know, we are a new generation of young people with the burning desire. And why not Morphire? We're inspired by a theatrical play from Kenya that, um, da, that raises money for the slums of Kenya, um, for, for poor people of Kenya, and they raise money for education. And that's the reason why Morphire contributes to the, to the education, the Spusisolo Education Foundation. This is a different personality, character, from the one that I investigated. Yes, sir. Uh, when, I, when I told people in the office, I said, I'm going to talk to DJ's boo. You know, they said, oh. I said, what do you know about him? Socialite. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Are you still a socialite? Do you still enjoy the public eye? Or do you, are you too busy now focusing on building your entrepreneurial career, building a business career? to worry about uh, that life, that kind of former life, which I thought was quite exciting, and, uh, and which gave you a good name, and which people obviously loved you. I think, uh, you know, you get called a lot of names. Um, mm -hmm. But from the beginning, when I got into the entertainment industry, I was never a socialite because I started my own record company, <laughs> which I ran for 15 years successfully. So um, the, highest, the highest selling female artist of all time after Brenda Fassi in this country is my artist, Zahara, whom we discovered, mm. discovered in the Eastern Cape. The highest selling house album is my album, is in the top three of the highest ever selling house album in this country mm. um, with the single Remember When It Rained, which I remixed a Josh Groban's single. Mm. Um, the highest selling 
Ivan Kwaito artist of all time in this country, Mzegezeg, he's in the top three, was my was artist. Was you? Everybody says it's you. No, sir, no, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just trying to show you my entrepreneurial spirit from when I was a young man yeah, getting into pretty. the entertainment industry when everybody else was excited about the lights and the cameras, the glitz and the glam and the red carpets. I was running a record company and as much as I was talented, I saw that if I could make myself a success as a musician, I could make others a success but and I can run a business I mean, out of it. You're, you're multi-talented. I mean, these are wonderful talents that you can switch from the one, you know, the one to the next without really blinking an eyelid, etc. You're a young boy from Timbisa. Just give us a brief, back, brief background of your, of the journey to where you are, because you're obviously full of energy. Where did you get this drive? I think, you know, when you come from the, the, the type of background that mm. I come from, you do not have a lot of um, options. You know, you don't come from a rich family, you don't come from a well-off family. Um, you know, you most of the time when you grew up, your biological father disappeared, you left with your mom, who then luckily gets to, you know, marry um, somebody who becomes your stepfather, who looks after you, mm. who, who I'm really highly grateful for, my father, whom, you know, I'm the man that I am today because of him, my stepfather, Mr. Luluk. Um, it was a tough upbringing, it wasn't easy, but at the time when you're a young person, you can't see how poor you are. But you can see when you start visiting friends or relatives or other people, you can see their environment is a little bit different and is a little bit comfortable. So coming from that environment, you want a better life, you want to build your mother a home, you want to educate yourself, you want to become a better person in society. And I think that's what has always inspired me. That's why, I, you know, at the age of 36 currently, I'm still studying part-time. I'm not doing well in my studies, I failed last year, but uh, I have to get that MBA. MBA, mm. I have to become a better business person and I'm hungry, I'm driven. I wanna but, And the music side? The music side was, was a lot of fun. Um, but when, how do you pick that up? I mean, did oh, you the, learn? Yeah, how do you pick up music? Music, I actually, um, I'd say it's partly inherited it. So my, mm. my uncle was the famous, um, he was a famous uh, musician globally. Mm. Um, his name was, uh, may so rest in peace by the way, his name was Simon Nkabinde. He went by the stage name Mahlatini mm. and he had a band which was called Mahlatini and the Mahotela Queens. And they, they were a huge name in Africa and globally and they traveled the world. And So when my mm. uncle was one of the kings of the Mbakanga music, mm. I guess, you know, in a way one inherited that liking mm into the music industry. But the warning from a home has always been, your uncle made headlines by passing on poor. Mm -hmm. So we don't want you to go that route and not finish school and get into entertainment and then the next thing you don't make it and you don't have a plan B. So they encouraged me to, to, you know, to get some sort of a qualification before getting into the entertainment industry. But I've always loved music and uh, it opened up so many doors for me. I, mean, I can't believe that I'm sitting with you right now. <laughs> if Supergroup don't come to you, I'm gonna find somebody else that does. Last question, can you mix it with Puza? I mean, does it, <laughs> like Red Bull and vodka? Goes. That's exactly what a lot of people are doing. You know, they're mixing does it with- Does it still give you wings? They're mixing it with, they're mixing it with cognac, with vodka, <laughs> with whiskey. They're drinking it on, on, their, on its own. People are loving the brand. And uh, if Sipo Group uh, doesn't, come, I, uh, doesn't come into the picture, um, nothing is going to stop the success of More Fire. Whether it's Supergroup or it's the second biggest um, distributor, distribution company in Africa or the third or the fourth, we will work so hard until they either come to us or we find them. No, I just wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. You've got the energy, you've got the drive. I love entrepreneurs and I, I'm not an entrepreneur, I'm an accountant, but I, I honestly hope that this goes the way that uh, you want it to do. And just the sheer energy behind it, I'm sure it's going to be a success. Thank but you, But it's sir. been wonderful being with you and we wish you all the best. God bless. <laughs>